you insist on doing this your way, I can't stop you. But if you pull that trigger, neither one of us will get out alive. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Well, good morning, hey boy. Oh, I just about to knock on your door. So I see. You can put your fist down now. Oh, oh, yes, sir. Hey, you leaving? No, just going down to the lobby to pick up some cigars. What did you want? Hmm? You were going to knock on my door. Oh, oh, yes, sir. I bring a note for you. Uh, here. Ah, thank you. From lady? Hmm, from a lady, huh? Ah, I see now. Dear sir, I am given to understand you are available for hire as a... the guide and interpreter. If such is the case, kindly present yourself at room 409 this morning at 10 o'clock. Signed, the Honorable Diana Coulter. Huh, what do you think of that? I think maybe it's almost 10 o'clock. Now, how did the Honorable Diana Coulter ever get the idea that I was a guide, an interpreter? Could be maybe because I tell her. You told her? Oh, yes, sir. What else did you tell her about me? Oh, I show her you most excellent man with gunplay. Also, class A, grade number one gentleman. Ah. That was good of you, hey boy. You're most welcome. And do you mind explaining why you took it upon yourself to give me these uh, recommendations? Honorable Diana Coulter seemed to need guide. I figure you man for a job. She's a very nice lady. So? Also, she's a very pretty lady. Oh. Uh, did you say it was almost 10 o'clock, hey boy? Yes, sir. Then I suppose I better go and present myself. <laughs> Your Columbia Phonograph dealer is proud to present the new Sound of Pleasure, Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. Only Columbia's leadership and advanced engineering could bring you so many exclusive features, so many handsome models. There's a Columbia Stereo One phonograph for every room, for every budget, every listening need. If space is a problem, Columbia has a new stowaway speaker model. If you want twin stereo units, Columbia has them. If you want true stereo sound in one unit, Columbia has it in several handsome models. Thrilled to the excitement of true high fidelity combined with the realism of stereophonic sound. No matter what you want in stereo, Columbia has it. And your Columbia Phonograph dealer is headquarters for Columbia Phonographs. Portables start as low as $24.95. Elegant consoles start at the amazing low price of $129.95. See them all. Hear them all today at your Columbia Phonograph dealer. Yes. I'm Paladin. I received your note. Oh, oh, the guide. Come in, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Paladin, are you familiar with the interior? The interior of what? Well, your own country, naturally. Uh, do you know the territory of Arizona? Yes. Uh, can you guide me to a place called Shiprock? I think so. I've never met a guide yet who admitted ignorance of anything. Then why did you ask? Uh, the Oriental boy told me you claim some familiarity with firearms, too. Some. Uh, have you ever seen one of these? Uh. Uh, Martini Henry. I didn't know they sold those rifles to civilians. Well, my uncle commands a regiment of Bengal Lancers. He insisted I bring it along to America to defend myself against the savages. Good idea. My brother has a plantation in the vicinity of Shiprock. It's what your people would call a ranch. I'm coming to live with him. May I ask why? That's pretty rough country. <laughs> because he is the only immediate relative I have left now. And in England, a spinster of my class doesn't have much choice. But uh, that's neither here nor there, is it? I need a guide. Uh, do you have references? Oh, well, some people seem to find this adequate. 
a card. Have gone, will travel. Hmm. Paladin, the legendary knight of Charlemagne. Well, I suppose you look about as trustworthy as any of your countrymen. You'll do. Uh, thank you. Uh, we start tomorrow morning at six. You will get two dollars per day, plus a five dollar bonus upon my safe arrival. I don't suppose you could manage to make that just a little more. Sir, I am not accustomed to haggling. How much more? Oh, say fifty dollars a day. It's outrageous. Do you realize that for two rupees a day in India, I could hire two elephants along with an experienced shikari to take me tiger hunting? Five dollars a day. Madam, I'm not accustomed to haggling. Make it forty. Oh, I should have listened to my uncle. He warned me all Americans are scoundrels. Well, I dare say you'd be no worse than the next man. As it was, we could have used the two elephants. We had seven pack mules, burdened to a slow walk with the Honorable Diana Coulter's possessions. In turn, I found her exasperating, infuriating, and amusing. But always I had to admire the dignity with which she brought her little bit of England to the wilds of the Arizona Territory. Oh, Una. Why are you calling a halt, Mr. Paladin? Uh, in the spring, the animals need water. We'll fill our canteens and give ourselves five minutes. Mr. Paladin. Yes? Your assistance, please. Help me to dismount. Oh. Oh, yes. Forgive me. Just a matter of principle, isn't it? I beg your pardon? Nothing, nothing. Oh. Oh, this is quite nice. I think we'll rest here for an hour. Uh, I'd like to bathe. In that water? Certainly, it appears clean. Why not? Oh, it's ice cold. It just melted the snow from the top of that mountain. Oh, excellent. Then it will be quite bracing. Well, this is hardly a safe place in which to leave you alone, Miss Calder. I have my rifle here. Quite convenient should I need it. Uh, you may wait on the other side of that hill until I call you. I trust we understand one another. Well, I don't think we do. What does that mean? From the top of that rise there, I spotted six mounted Comanche Indians. Now, they were riding slow, studying the ground for tracks. It looked as though they were wearing war paint. Redskins? Oh, but my good man, don't you realize that running away is bound to make the worst possible impression? Miss Coulter, when Comanches are at war, they're every bit as disagreeable as the tribesmen of India's northwest frontier, or have you forgotten Khyber Pass? Oh, no. Oh, dear, no. Then I'll give you five minutes. Uh, Paladin. What? Uh, may I say that thus far, I have been most favorably impressed by the correctness of your behavior. Well, that's nice. Uh, please don't give me cause now to change my opinion of you. I understand. Please feel you can trust me. Five minutes, bathed and dressed. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because... There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend means fine tobacco, Filter Blend up front. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco's specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up on the head of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Back on the trail, I kept a sharp watch, and we seemed to have lost the Indians. Still, my uneasiness continued. Several miles further on, I stopped the pack train as I saw a family in a buckboard approach us, the wagon loaded with household goods. Why did you stop? I want to talk to that man. Howdy. Hello. 
You figure to have any use for your scalp, turn around and go on back. Comanches? Burned out my neighbors four miles back last night. Killed them all. Better take my advice, mister. Turn on back. Now, this lady's brother has a ranch near Shiprock. That's where we're headed. I wouldn't take a step in that direction unless I had a regiment of U.S. cavalry in front of me. No, sir. This man knows what he's talking about, Miss Coulter. Do you think I could bear not knowing whether my brother's safe or not? We'll continue. But do you realize the danger? We'll continue. All right. Oh, we'll go on. Thanks anyway, mister. Darn fools, you might just as well dig your graves right here. Get up there. We continued on the trail under the hot Arizona sun until nightfall and made camp in a grove of cottonwoods, careful to avoid attracting the attention of the Comanches. Next morning, we started the last day's ride to Shiprock. We pressed the animals in ourselves and reached the ranch at noon. I didn't like the deathly stillness of the place. We dismounted and walked up the path to the house. Quiet, isn't it? Perhaps they're all inside at dinner. Richard? Richard, I'm here. Children? Anybody home? Wait here. Paladin? Don't go in there. Paladin, what? They're dead. All of them. Dead? No. The redskins. It must have happened all in a moment. They never even had a chance to hide. We have to get out of here fast. Oh, no. Look, those Comanches may be back with the whole tribe. They must be buried. No. There isn't time, not even for that. They will receive a proper burial. Miss Coulter, if we don't leave at once, there are liable to be six graves here instead of four. I will not leave until they are properly buried. All right, Miss Coulter. But we'll have to hurry. The shadows were long in the day as we paid our last respects beside the four fresh mounds of earth. The Honorable Diana Coulter was stiffly erect, the rifle that had seen duty with the Bengal lancers held across her arm. She had not cried out or shed a tear, but her face had hardened into a mask of hatred and single-minded vengefulness. Please continue, Mr. Paladin. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave... Paladin! I got him. He's dead. Yeah. Paladin, I shot the redskin. Uh, Are you badly hurt? Well, I'm not exactly comfortable with this arrow in my shoulder. Are you able to move? Uh, it better be. That rifle shot will bring the rest of them down on us. Let's get back to the house. Here, let me help you. Yes. Thank you. Look, if we can make it, there's a trap door I noticed in the main room. Leads to a cellar. Will it be safe? Uh, we'll get there and hope. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet?
When we got into the house, we could hear the Indians approaching on horseback. The trapdoor in the front room led down a ladder to a small hole in the ground. It was cramped and dirty, and the only light came from the cracks in the crude floor overhead. But it was a reasonably safe hiding place. The burning pain from the arrow in my shoulder was almost unbearable. Are you going to be all right? Uh, I... I hope so. I'm afraid I'll have to ask your help. But of course. Here. Here, take this knife. What for? You'll have to relieve me of this arrow. Oh, no. Miss Coulter. Uh, Miss Coulter, I don't know just who else to call on right now. But I... There's a chance I may need that shoulder. Come on, take the knife. They're here. Up there in the house. Stop talking. Get that arrow out. It's been quiet up there for some time now. Do you suppose they've gone? No, not far. I've no idea how long we've been down here. Uh, it must be almost daylight. Uh, I'm going up to have a look around. Careful, your shoulder. That's uh, better. It's better. Well? It's clear. Yeah. Come on up. Quiet. Here, give me your hand. Oh. Oh, the shambles they've made of this place. And this is only the beginning. They'll have it burned to the ground before they're through. But where are they now? They're probably still outside. Let's take a look out the window. All right, now, get down. Keep your head down. Now. Look under those trees. No, 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 right there by the water pump. Rolled up in their blankets. They must all be asleep. No. No, there's a sentry. See? Look, look over there. Our horses along with theirs... Couldn't we make a run for them? We'd never get past that sentry. If we could just reach the horses. May I offer an idea? Go ahead. I suggest we employ a diversionary tactic. A diversionary tactic? I recall that Uncle found the strategy quite successful in his skirmishes with the tribesmen. Oh, now, you be serious, Miss Coulter. Our time is short. I'm quite serious. I would venture to guess they haven't bothered to water our horses. No, I don't think they would. And they haven't had any water since yesterday morning. Then the poor beasts are thirsty. A pail of water placed outside and, and sloshed around a bit might very well attract at least one of them. Yeah. And if we can draw a horse up close to the window... Well, you'll be gambling on the length of the tether. Of course, it's all a gamble. Wait a minute. The rope may reach if we go to the back of the house. And if we're successful, we fasten a dummy figure to the horse's back. A dummy? Blankets rolled up, anything. It won't matter in this light. Then we send him off at top speed. Now, this will draw the sentry's attention, and we can make our run for it unseen in the opposite direction. It will only be a matter of precious minutes, but it could make the difference. And that's a trick you learned from Uncle? He talked a great deal about the regiment. Well, shall we give it a go, Mr. Paladin? We'll give it a go, Miss Coulter. Diana went into the bedroom to get the blankets for the dummy figure, and I found a pail of water in the kitchen. When she was ready, we quietly slipped out the back door, well out of the sentry's watch, and tried to attract our horses with the sloshing sound of water. The tether was long enough to reach, and just as we had hoped, both of our horses came after the water. As they drank, I cut their ropes and we tied the dummy figure onto Diana's horse. Is it fastened securely? Yes. Now you get on my horse. Now here. I'll help you up. Now stay here. I'll head your horse toward the sentry, and if we're in luck, it'll stampede their horses. All right, ready? Yes, send him on. Right. Yeah! There. There goes the sentry after him. Quickly, get on. We must hurry. All right. The horses are stampeding. Uncle knew what he was about, all right. Ready, Mr. Paladin? Ready, Miss Calder. Yeah! Yeah! Yes? Miss 
the violet oh, oh, Miss Wong, Miss come Wong. in. You have pretty flowers. You are the for pretty lady. Fine, just put them down over there. Hey, boy, safe for me to tell you. Carriage is ready. Waiting outside. Oh, oh, I guess I'll just go and see if the pretty lady is ready. Oh, Mr. Fallon. Yes? You sure pretty tonight. Oh, okay, you... Okay, the top hat, oh. the white gloves. Oh, oh my. Well, thank you, Miss Wong. Oh. I intend thank to really you. do justice to my position as a guide when I show San Francisco to Miss Coulter tonight. I just called from the Honorable Diana Coulter room. Oh, oh she's lovely, too. Jill. Oh, my. Well, you, you've seen oh, her, then. Isa. Oh, uh, Miss Wong. Oh, Isa. I suppose as ladies do, she had her wrap laid out and her bag and her scarf. Oh, yes, I... Yes. Well, tell me, did you see anything of a Martini Henry? A Martini Henry? Uh, that's a rifle. Oh, no. Good. Good. And I guess we're ready to go. <laughs> Car owners, have you ever heard of K-Site Smooth Seal? Why, no. Why, no. Is it new? What does it do? Well, this is off the record. Just between us boys, your automatic transmission, does it ever make a noise? You mean a little kind of grinding? Does that little chatter matter? I hear a very weird whir sometimes. It doesn't sound good, boys, but let's be sure. When you're sitting at the light and it goes to green, you put your foot down hard. Have you ever felt a sort of a jerk, a kind of a jar, or heaven help you, a real thud bump? Oh, I've felt uh, it. Oh, me too. I've had it, stranger. What do we do? Well, don't buy a horse and don't trade your car. Just get yourself some new K-Site Smooth Seal. New K-Site Smooth Seal? New K-Site Smooth Seal? New K-Site Smooth Seal? How will that help? Why, it's made to soften those shrunken seals, which are apt to leak when there's power on the wheels. It stops those thud bumps, jerks, and jars that are apt to creep into these modern cars. Why, this K-Site Smooth Seal in one application can pack them all off on a long vacation, and it's less than $2 at your service station. A little new K-Site Smooth Seal, boy? Come on. I'll go. And if it doesn't work, you get double your money back. <laughs> Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin. Tonight's story was written by Simon Winselberg and adapted for radio by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright as Hayboy, Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong, and Virginia Christine as Diana Coulter. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>